The Valve Steam Deck is one of the most... Gr uh, and of course it's not working. <laughs> The Valve Steam Deck is one of the most groundbreaking computers of the last decade. Not only is it putting Linux in the hands of casual gamers, it also represents Valve's commitment to make Steam a desktop experience, and not just for gaming. The Steam Deck makes the promise that it's not just a Nintendo Switch for Steam games, it can be your computer as well. So to test that, I used it as my computer for a week. All gaming, writing, editing, and gameplay capture for this video was done exclusively on the deck. And I'm here to say, I don't regret it. First, let's talk about the desktop experience as a whole. Before you even get started, you'll need a dock. I know you can use the desktop while the deck is in handheld mode, but for daily computing, you're going to want to at least hook the deck up to a monitor especially because the low resolution of the deck's primary display doesn't play very nice with newer programs. I actually couldn't hit the I accept the agreement button on Ultimaker Cura, for example. Given there's only one USB-C port on the device, that also means providing power while it's docked. I used this J5 Create dongle with 100 watt power delivery, the charger the Steam Deck came with, and a powered USB 3.0 hub for my peripherals. For the mouse and keyboard, honestly, Bluetooth mode has worked just fine for me, since I likely won't be gaming on a mouse and keyboard when I'm using the deck. I will say that I wish there was a faster way to transition from gaming mode to desktop mode. I don't want to sound too harsh here. I think it's incredible that Valve has built two different desktop environments that can be switched to this seamlessly. I just find it annoying to have to navigate to the power menu or the desktop every time I want to switch modes. With that said, it is very nice that my Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Steam credentials, and apps all travel seamlessly between these modes. Using the deck as a desktop was a very different experience to any computer I've used prior. To clarify, much of that was because I've never spent an extended amount of time with Linux. The included repository of working apps felt a lot more like using a phone than a computer, mostly because I wasn't interested in finding ways to download apps that don't natively work with this distro. For example, my main browser on Windows is Opera, but try as I might, I couldn't find any way to get Opera working on this operating system. That's actually the biggest problem I have with the deck, the operating system. Not because I hate Linux or think Windows is flawless, it's just that troubleshooting Linux issues isn't always the most user-friendly process. Every problem has multiple possible solutions, but none of them work 100% every time. And more so, the Steam Deck uses Arch as its foundation, specifically a distro of Arch called KDE Plasma. And on the internet, when you ask Arch questions, you get Arch answers. Why aren't you using the AUR? Did you update the dependencies? This is a dumb problem. You shouldn't use that program. Yeah, if you're a novice Linux user and you plan on using the Steam Deck as a daily driver, my advice to you is just stick with the apps in the software center. So long as you do that, your life will probably be pretty simple. OBS and Discord install in a flash, and other programs like GIMP and Raw Therapy mean that I had a whole suite of free, open source apps to use for creative projects. Oh yeah, if you aren't aware, Adobe products like Lightroom, Premiere, and Photoshop don't exist on Linux, so you're going to need to look through the available apps to find something that fits your needs. Caden Live is a non-linear video editor that's very similar to Premiere, but it's completely unusable on the deck. It's really highly reviewed, but it's just too unstable for me and it keeps crashing. DaVinci Resolve was my next option, but that didn't work either, since I would import footage into Resolve, and it just wouldn't display anything. No matter what type of video codec or file type I used, Resolve was a no-go. My recommendation to anyone who wants to use this for editing is Flowblade. It's small, fast, and works pretty well. It's also very similar visually to Premiere, which is what I'm most comfortable with. Another must-have for me was an audio recording program, so I downloaded Audacity as well. I have the 64GB version of the Steam Deck because I am, as they say, a cheap bastard. Unfortunately, that meant importing footage would be pretty hard considering I also have games installed. I do have an SD card in the expansion slot, but in an effort to minimize wasted space, I decided to use an external hard drive for video storage. 
If I continue to use this as a long-term solution, I'll probably set up a NAS for my footage anyway, so get subscribed if you want to see a video about that. The next quirk about the Steam Deck as a workstation is navigating SteamOS's complicated file structure. As my more Linux-savvy buddy said when I asked him for help, God, that's so scuffed. I don't know what sort of black magic Valve had to conjure in order to make the Steam Deck's mode transition feature work, but it's clear they don't expect you to toy around here very much. Fortunately, all I needed was to transfer files from my SD card to my external hard drive, and the default file explorer, Dolphin, is more than capable of that. It is worth noting here as well, one of the optimizations Valve made for touchscreens was removing double clicks from most of the UI. Single clicks launch shortcuts, play video files, open apps, etc. It's not a big deal, but it did take some getting used to. Like I said, it felt like I was using a very advanced phone more than a desktop computer. Once you know your way around, the deck itself is quite the laptop. The main thing to be aware of is resource management. With 4 cores, 8 threads, and 16 gigs of memory, the deck is basically running the same specs as a mid-range gaming laptop from a couple of years ago. Leaving applications like a video editor or OBS running in the background isn't a death sentence, and I never encountered any issues with Edge or Firefox sucking up RAM, but you do need to be aware of your limitations. On my main computer, I could probably play a game while watching a YouTube video and encoding a project in the background. On the Steam Deck, you basically have to choose between two of those three tasks. But you do get to choose, and that's what's so incredible about the deck, its versatility. If I want to write on my monitor with the deck playing a video next to me, I can. If I want to edit video and use the deck's screen as a monitor, I can do that too. Heck, I can undock the deck from my desk and edit video in portable mode if I really wanted to, so long as I had the files saved to my machine. And if you work from home, the built-in microphone is pretty good, as far as built-in microphones go. Not everything is flawless about the experience, of course. For starters, switching between game mode and desktop mode usually results in this weird scaling issue. I'm not sure what's causing it, maybe it's just my monitor being high resolution, but it's strange. Second, the fact that there's only one USB-C port is really annoying sometimes. I don't want to get too detailed here, because this definitely isn't a problem for most people, but it suffices to say that plugging a hard drive, webcam, and USB DAC into the same USB-C port is a bad heckin' time. Also, going back to an earlier point, I wish the deck automatically switched between the game screen when in handheld mode and the desktop when docked. Obviously this wouldn't be ideal in all circumstances, but a feature toggle in the settings would be nice. It also gets hot. The thermal layout inside the deck is pretty good at keeping heat away from your hands when in handheld mode, but the fan is very loud whenever you're doing any real work on the device, like gaming or editing. I even heard the fan ramp up when I was just watching 4K YouTube, which is weird. Depending on what you want to use the deck for, this might not be an issue, but make sure you keep the deck in a spot with good airflow. It will absolutely overheat if you just plug it in and chuck it in a drawer. Lastly, because of the limited bandwidth on the USB-C port, I can't run my display at the correct refresh rate. It's stuck at 144Hz, even though I can see the 165Hz option in the monitor menu. Like I said, I likely won't be playing games at my desk, and more importantly, I don't think there are any games that I could run at 165Hz, but it is a weird fly in the ointment that could have been solved by having two USB-C ports on the top and bottom of the device. This is the first of my videos covering the Steam Deck, and I think it's important to analyze the deck as more than just a game console. $400 is a lot of money, and users getting into this device are likely to want to use it as a computer at least some of the time. Valve put in a lot of work to make that experience as polished as possible, and I think it shows. There are some design flaws in the software that need to be ironed out, and there are hardware decisions that might make this device a game breaker for some, but for the most part, the Steam Deck lives up to its promise of being more than just a Nintendo Switch and actually standing out as a compelling computer for the price. I will continue to use the deck as my only computer, so get subscribed and hit the notification bell for my next video looking at the versatility of the deck when it comes to ways it has to game. Thanks for watching. To prove my point here, the Steam Deck is also my teleprompter. <laughs>